This meeting of the Sacramento County Board of Supervisors for Wednesday, April 9, 2014. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll and establish a quorum? Yes, the first item this afternoon is um, the Sacramento County Safety Net Workshop and the report back from January 22nd, 2014 presentation um, by the Sacramento Regional Coalition Day on Homelessness of the findings and recommendations of the Sacramento Homeless Death Report 2002 yeah. through 2013. Way to close. That does conclude our formal presentation. I want to thank uh, the presenters for participating and offering some really good perspectives on this. And I would turn it over to Mr. Gill at this point. Um, members of the board, what we're seeking today is uh, some guidance and some direction. After this, what we will do is take all the input that we've received. And it's been mentioned that we are getting into our budget process, which will be coming to you in early June. So we look forward to feedback from the board and from the community at this point. Okay. Any comments from my colleagues before we accept public uh, no, we need to comment? hear from, hear from okay. folks, though. So. All right. Um, we have about uh, two dozen folks that have signed up to speak. Um, because this is, I think, one of the most important issues um, we have to talk about in this county and our community, I'm going to keep the testimony limit to three minutes, which, which is our standard um, allotment for each individual speaker. I'm going to respectfully ask that you please adhere to that because I want to be fair to everyone and make sure everyone has a chance to be heard because uh, we'll have about um, about an hour's worth of uh, public testimony. Mr. Chair, Good afternoon. My name is Rachel Rios. I'm the Executive Director of La Familia Counseling Center and I wanted to talk with you today about the Birth and Beyond program as a service hub. La Familia is one of nine Birth and Beyond Family Resource Centers in Sacramento County. And like many of my partners in the Family Resource Centers, we are located in some of the most severe, highest risk communities. All of the Birth and Beyond sites offer culturally relevant services in multiple languages. In addition, many of the services we provide are also offered off-site in the community in locations such as schools, food banks, libraries, and other service providers. The Birth and Beyond core services currently funded by First Five Sacramento include the evidence-based nurturing parenting program, which is a home visitation model, parent education classes, including classes for prenatal moms, fathers, and court-approved parent education, crisis intervention services, CPS differential response and aftercare. But additionally, many of the um, uh, family resource centers also provide additional services, such, such as social connections, family nights, stress-reducing workshops, fitness classes, financial and employment programs. Uh, La Familia, for example, is a SETA training center, so we offer adult basic ed, GED, digital literacy, and on-the-job training opportunities. Some of the sites, such as La Familia, offer mental health counseling services, and some of the sites also offer medical and mental health services, such as dental clinics and WIC on site. La Familia also is part of the Building Healthy Communities that's funded by the California Endowment, and so we offer health navigation services that connect people with health services, health home, and assist them in navigating their, their chronic disease by offering translation and transportation services, as well as services to at-risk youth. Each of the Family Resource Centers offers an array of services to meet the needs of the community that complement the core program, which focuses on reducing incidents of child maltreatment and strengthening families. These Family Resource Centers work because they are trusted hubs in the community and because they partner with other agencies to provide critical services and that because they are rigorously monitored and evaluated. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Hey, Robert Sanger. And following Robert is Roy Alexander. Good afternoon, Chairman Board Supervisors. A pleasure to be here again with you today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say the Sacramento Housing Alliance is uh, also a member and supportive of uh, the Sacramento Building Health Needs Community, and I believe you were provided with a letter that had many of the asks in that, so I won't really go into those details. First of all, uh, we are constantly using terms like housing, units, shelters, etc., but we got to really remember what we're really talking about here, and what we're really talking about are homes, and homes that are affordable, especially to those that are hardest to house. When people have a place to call home, they become more stable and will be less of a burden on all safety net programs. 
with that being said, there are a few recommendations I do have and thoughts as to what, uh, moving forward, what you should be doing, uh, considering. First of all, you'll need to ensure that the development of affordable housing stock is reflective of and affordable to those working and living in the community, earning less than 80% of the area median income. A healthy affordable housing stock uh, will go a long way at minimizing impacts on safety net programs. Also encourage you guys to expedite the review of the county's affordable housing ordinance to ensure that the in lieu fees uh, in light of development is providing the gap financing needed to develop enough affordable housing units that meets the need of county residents, especially those that are hardest to house. I'd also ask that you work with affordable housing advocates and community stakeholders during the transition of the Regional Human Rights and Fair Housing Commission to ensure residents have access to rental housing resources and landlord-tenant mediation to limit unneeded or excessive evictions that could lead to homelessness. And lastly, I would encourage you to work with your counterparts at City Council as they move forward with the development of the arena and the redevelopment of downtown core in order to minimize the displacement of lower income populations. Encourage them to keep the SRO ordinance intact. If revised, strengthen it. The individuals in these units are the hardest to house, and if displaced, who do you think will end up holding the check for their needed services? So with that, I thank you again for your time this afternoon. I look forward to future conversations with you. Thank you, Daryl. Good afternoon, Board of Supervisors. Thank you for this opportunity. As many of you know, I tend to be a leader in Sacramento area congregations together, and I'm also here as part of the hub movement, the Building Healthy Communities. And my community is around Trinity Cathedral, which is in Midtown, and we serve the homeless. We serve them dinner, we give them a place to sleep, and this is usually on a Wednesday. Tonight, at 6 o'clock, we'll be feeding some homeless. And in my times with the homeless, I've discovered that one of the things that they need is a job. One of the funny things I have not heard in this particular safety net hearing is anything much about jobs. You know, it's income that drives everything. Income is what gives us taxes for our county to be able to give people homes with their, <clears throat> or not homes, but shelters and so on. But I'm wondering if there might be some programs that the county might have or can expand to to help with jobs. I certainly would like to see some way that perhaps the social services in talking about these mobile services could perhaps come to our churches. There is a pilgrimage that goes to six different churches around the Midtown area, and each one of them is an opportunity to meet 150 homeless people. So over the course of a year, I've seen over 2,000 people. Some of them are repeats, some of them are new. But in all of it, I would say a good 50% just say one thing that would get them off the street, and that's a job. So my push, a job. But on another note, there was a Wednesday night when there was a lady who had passed out drunk in the alleyway. The fire department came and it was asked that she goes to a program and they would not assist, no police came, and she was left there where she was laying. That doesn't sound like service to me. If you go down to the social services department on Q Street and you try to apply for GA, get there for two hours, get an appointment for a month down the road, at $300 or $200 or whatever it's gonna be that we're gonna get, is it going to come for a month and I need it today? How is that service? I think that this is an area that maybe it wouldn't cost money for the county to be able to expand and better the services. Just being able to get in, get what I need, and get out. And to go on and to find something that will lead me to the next step that will take me higher and higher up the mountain to a job. That's what ending homelessness is about. I know you all want to do the best you can, and I'm here to help as best I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wei. Okay, Jennifer Ellis, and after Jennifer is uh, Sharon Chandler. 
Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Ellis, and I'm with Capital Health Network. Capital Health Network is a membership organization of community health centers and other uh, safety net providers who are involved in health care delivery. Um, altogether, our members serve just purely in terms of patients, about 200,000 folks here in the Sacramento area, and those are 2013 numbers, so not representative of the ACA expansion. Um, we are grateful to be part of this conversation. We're grateful that the Board of Supervisors reached out, um, and I did have a couple of priorities that we are thinking about. Um, before I go on, I do want to say that we are also affiliated with the Building Healthy Communities Initiative. Um, the three things that really stuck out to me as we um, provided feedback were one, it's hard to have this conversation without talking about primary care and mental health. And so when we are talking about the safety net, when we're talking about housing and clothing and shelter and food um, and safety from victimization, it's hard to exclude those other pieces. And so we want you to think really comprehensively as you move forward with solutions. Um, the the other thing that comes up when we when we mention that is if we don't include the undocumented and access to health care um, in this conversation about the safety net, when we move to the conversation about the Affordable Care Act, there is no place for them there. So we want to make sure that this dialogue begins and that we put it on the table. And third, um, we want to just embrace the ability to work more closely with the county, with the primary care center and other county services, both around shared clients and how we can better coordinate care, um, but also we want to support you as much as we can in the provision of those services. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, we look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon Chandler, and after Sharon is David Ramirez. Hello, Good Sharon. afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, Sharon. Uh, I'm Sharon Chandler, the Executive Director of Yes to College Education Resources, Inc., and the African American Women's Health Legacy Program. We are also members of the Building Healthy Communities Initiative here in South Sacramento. Uh, the African American population of Sacra Sacramento County is a little bit over 70,000, and 52% of these uh, of this population is African American women. Uh, of these women, we are working with, the, the, my organization is working with African American women and their daughters who have type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and are experiencing uh, obesity and other chronic diseases. Uh, after a year of working with these ladies, well, actually, we started with three people sitting at a kitchen table and talking about the legacy, three women who want to leave a legacy of good health to our families, and came up on this program of helping other women to become leaders and to take, a, take, the, uh, take the initiative to start building health, healthy families. So in the course of just one year, we started with three women, and now we have over 150 African-American women and their organizations and businesses who support us and are uh, benefiting from the education programs, from conferences and workshops and uh, classes that we've started in the uh, South Sacramento community. I just wanted to say that uh, African-Americans have the highest uh, disparity for all things that are bad, it seems. And then we have the lowest disparity for those things that are good. And what we want to do is, what, is to ask you to support and to strengthen those programs that have to deal with prevention where, health, where our health is concerned. We're concerned about leaving a legacy of health uh, in our community for our girls. And we, know, we all know that women have the control of what our families eat. We buy the groceries, we plan the menus, we feed the babies, and, and we start this uh, 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 health habit, whether it's good or bad for our families. Um, in our program, we've talked to more than, uh, like I said, 150 women. We've taken 12 women to the Oak Park Imani Clinic, 12 women who were uninsured and hadn't been to a doctor in over uh, 10 or 15 years, but discovered that they had diabetes. One of our ladies discovered that she has breast cancer, and now she's in treatment. On a personal note, um, the way that we work with the African American community is we start from the inside out. Um, 
my associate and I started with our own mothers. And this opportunity or this program has given me the opportunity after 60 years to really know who my mother is, who's 76. And she's involved in our program, has been in denial about her diabetes. But through the support of other women who have diabetes and are coming out with, uh, with their, their, health dis uh, their health chronic uh, diseases, my mother hopefully will be here, be here when I'm her age uh, in another 15, 16 years. So hopefully our program will be around and we can help other women to benefit from and to be able to share their mothers and to, to uh, perpetuate a legacy of good health instead of no health. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ann Fox. After Ann is uh, Morgan Staines. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Annie Fox. I am an organizer at Sacramento Area Congregations Together, which is a member of the Building Healthy um, Communities Initiative. Um, as I think you guys know, we were really excited about this process, and I think everybody on the Human Services Steering Committee, uh, Coordinating Committee, um, for the time and work they put into it. That said, I have to say I'm disappointed with the process, and not with the work they were done, but with the assignment they were given. Um, we had 30 people who came here today wanting to speak, and I know that this board did not want to hear from service providers fighting to get their program protected, but it's hard to ask people to stay around for three hours to get their comments heard. Over half the people that we had here who were hoping to speak or here to help support somebody else to speak had to leave to pick up a child or go to a job. Furthermore, while I really respect um, the community planning councils, they don't represent the people who are dependent on these safety net services. A month ago, I went to a training of health navigators to talk about this safety net process, and we worked hard to turn out people to the meeting in South Sacramento. That meeting, A, I was shocked to realize was all white people serving on that commission in an area that is largely of color, and B, this was a community agenda item at the end that people again had to sit through a process that was irrelevant to them in order to get to have voice into a process, an important process that is really relevant to them, the clients they serve, and the services they provide. As you know, we don't take government money and we don't provide specific services. We really worked hard to listen to the expertise of service providers in our areas that we really feel like know the gaps that are missing. The common themes we heard were services for the undocumented. It is not cost effective or ethical to limit pr preventative services that will stop emergency room emissions to undocumented families. Two is realignment is a huge opportunity for our communities. We have tremendous respect for the sheriff, but investing in human services is the most humane and cost effective way to keep people out of jail. Three is site sharing and coordination. Navigation has been a huge theme today. A lot of that could be done by having more enrollers, more navigators, more shared in clinic, in homeless shelter, in shared site, sharing between the services so that people are not traveling all around town to find them and find out about them. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will point out that um Oh. Good afternoon. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. This is my first time standing before you all, so thank you for your patience. You're welcome. So my name is Pham Se Turn. I am a community health coordinator for the Community Health Navigator Program at Southeast Asian Assistance Center. Along with our partners at La Familia Counseling Center, Capital Health Network, and the Hmong Women Heritage Association. We serve the Spanish-speaking community, the Khmer-speaking community, the Hmong-speaking community, the Vietnamese-speaking community, as well as the Mien-speaking community. And we are all part of the Building Healthy Community Initiative. So we have been helping community residents navigate the health system. And one particular gentleman that we have been working with, he is 58 years old, and he has multiple chronic illnesses. And he was on CMISP, 
and was transitioned to the LIP program. And um, due to the Affordable Care Act and due to Medi-Cal expansion, he now qualifies for Medi-Cal. So our understanding was that the county would do an automatic transition from the LIP program to Medi-Cal. And for some reason on January 22nd, he lost his coverage and he was not aware of this. He made an appointment to see his provider and when he was doing the paperwork, they said that his insurance was no longer active. So we called healthcare options and they said that his insurance is no longer active as of January 22nd for an undisclosed reason, which they were not able to tell us why. So this year, he has gone back with his navigator to the primary care center on Broadway five times, and each time they have spoken to someone. And the first time they said to wait one month and come back, or wait one month to see if your benefits card arrives in the mail, and if it doesn't, to come back. So he returned with his navigator, and they again told him to wait a couple weeks. And just this past Friday, I decided to go with the navigator and this gentleman to speak to someone about his situation. And they said to wait 24 to 48 hours for a temporary Medi-Cal Medi card. So we waited and yesterday we went in and um, actually on Friday, to backtrack on Friday, the lady that we spoke to said that there wasn't anything that we could have done on our end or that we needed to do on our end, that it was a glitch in the system. And um, according to the records, the last card that was mailed out to him was February of 2013. So we went back, the navigator and the gentleman went back yesterday and, and they were told that he would have to reapply all over again. And our understanding is that from experience, it's been anywhere from 45 to 60 days for an application process. So all of this year, he hasn't been able to see a doctor. And again, he does have multiple chronic illnesses. So I would encourage you to, um, how about we assign you a navigator before you leave here today that somebody maybe will clear this by tomorrow? Yeah. I just can't believe you that. have You have the DHA and, and DHA right test you. directors right behind you <laughs> taking copious <laughs> notes with he's, their cards he's, ready to he's give He's going to, to give you his card. Paul and Sherry both. I hope you navigate. I don't, know, I don't often see Paul's face turn bright red <laughs> that often, but it, it just happened. So I would encourage you to... Uh, work closely with the nonprofit organizations, those who have the resources, the language capacity, who works closely with the community residents who have built trust with them to build a more effective system, a system, and come up with a strategic plan to, um, so then we can get everyone moving forward. Great. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Ms. Seeker. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Seeker. Hey, Paul? And then 